Hello, welcome to Learn Swift for Beginners, Lesson 3. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to express some simple decision making in your Swift code using if statements. All right, let's get started. So for this one, we're going to start a brand new playground. All right, so we've done this before. Let's just call this one the if playground, and I'm going to store this on my desktop. Okay, so we're talking about if statements today. And this is really exciting because it lets us finally start to make decisions through code and express some sort of logic. So for example, if I have, uh, let's declare a constant here. So let a equals 10, for example. And I wanted to print this statement um, only if a is less than let's say 11 which it is right here but mm, okay actually that is that is not right let's say 4 and this gives us a reason to use the if statement right okay so print only if a is less than 4 but a is 10 right so we shouldn't be outputting this. So what we can use here is an if statement and what it allows us to do is only execute some code if a certain condition is true. So in this case we want to print this only if a is less than 4. So we can write an if statement to check if that's true or not before we print that statement. So let me show you what that syntax looks like. And if you're not familiar with programming terms, syntax is simply like the grammatical structure of the language. So it, it's basically the keywords to use and um, how we go about declaring an if statement or writing an if statement. So it all starts with the if keyword. Following the if keyword, we have the condition in which we want to check. And following the condition, we have a set of curly brackets. Now inside the curly brackets, that's where we put the code that we want to run if that condition is true. So that's your very basic if statement. Now going back to our playground, let's write it out and print this only if a is less than four. So we can do something like that, if a, and then we can use this operator less than four. And remember, we need to surround the piece of code that we wanna execute if the condition is true. Uh, using a pair of curly brackets like that. So you can put the curly bracket on the same line or you can put it on a second line, it doesn't matter. Uh, but what you usually want to do is indent the code um, that is inside it, just so it's easier to read. I usually like to put this curly bracket in the same line like that. Okay, so now you can see that in the console, there's nothing printed and also to the right here, it doesn't give you a preview because this condition is false. A is not less than four because A is 10. Now, what if we changed A to one and let the playground process? Okay, now it prints this statement and it previews this statement. See, it's printed down here. So that's your very basic um, if statement. Now there are other cool things that you can do with an if statement. There is an else if clause. So for example, using the else if clause, you can check a second condition if the first condition evaluates to false. And the syntax for that looks like that. So you have your if condition and then you have your curly brackets and then you use the keywords else if and then you check another condition and you have another set of curly brackets. So if you write it this way, you're basically checking condition number one. You know, is that true? If it's false, now you're checking condition two. And if that actually evaluates the true, then you're running the code inside that else if block. Now keep in mind that it kind of goes from top down. And if the first condition is actually true, then it's gonna run that piece of code inside the first set of curly brackets and it's just going to ignore your else if statement. So let's take a look at that inside the playground. 
So here I'm going to put else if a is less than, um, let's say, 8. Then now I'm going to print only if a is less than 8. So now I'm going to change, oops, not this. I'm going to change a back to 10 here. And you can see nothing gets printed because uh, first it checks this condition. If it's false, which it is, then it's going to check this condition and it's also false. So nothing gets printed. Now what if I changed A to 7? If I changed A to 7, you can see that it prints the second statement because first it checks this condition. That's false. So now it checks this condition and that actually turned out to be true. So it's going to run this line of code here. However, if A is 1, then it checks this first one and then it prints this one and then it totally ignores all of the other else if conditions. Now I said all of the other else if conditions, right? I say that because you can have as many else if conditions as you want. So you can say if A less is less than 10 and then you can you can continue adding as many conditions as you want but keep in mind that it checks from top to bottom and as soon as it finds a condition that is true it's going to run that piece of code and ignore all of the other conditions now finally there is a clause that you can run if all of the conditions are true kind of like as a fail safe or as a last resort and that is the else keyword so the way you write this is using the else keyword. It's not else if, it's just simply else. And there's no condition attached because if all of the conditions above it are false, then it's going to run the code inside of this else statement here. So going back to the playground, let me show you what that looks like. Um, else print nothing was true. And now let me change a back to 10 here so you can see that it prints nothing was true because it's checking this statement it's false this statement is false and sorry I mean conditions and this condition is also false because a is not less than 10 a is actually 10 so this would actually evaluate to false and finally it just gets to this else clause and it's going to print what's in here Okay, so let me show you a couple of other things that you can do with else statements. And let's change these print statements to something that is a lot more recognizable or easy to read. Let's do that branch one, branch two, and here, oops, branch three. Okay, so. Um, first of all, let me show you how to do less than or equal to. Now you see it prints branch 3. So that's how you do less than or equal to. And likewise, you can do greater than or equal to. And you can see here it still prints branch 3. Now, what if you wanted to check if it was exactly 10? You wouldn't do that because remember, this equal sign is an assignment operator. So what you need to do to compare if a is equal to 10, you use the double equal sign like that. You can see here it prints branch 3. Okay, so why don't we introduce another constant up here, let's say b, and let's have that equal to 4. I want to show you that your conditions for your if statements and your different branches can get pretty complicated, and you can involve multiple pieces of data in your condition. So you can go if a is less than 4, if you want to check b as well and you want to say you know and b is less than 4, that's how you would do it. You would use this double ampersand sign and now you're checking two conditions. You're checking is a less than 4 and b less than 4 and only if both of those are true are you going to get this branch here? So let's try that out. So if I set B to 1 and A to 1, then both of these conditions here are true. So it's going to print branch 1. 
However, if I set B to 10, right, it's going to just, see, it hits this branch 2 now because A is 1, uh, which is less than 8, and it didn't print branch 1 because this was false, right? Even though A is 1 and this part is true, we have to have this part to be true as well because where you're saying is A less than 4 and B less than 4 and B is 10 right now. However, you can also do or. So you can say, is A less than 4 or B less than 4? And in this case, either condition can be true, and that would cause uh, it to go into this branch. So you can see now it is in branch 1. All right, so uh, let's say A is 10 and B is 1. So A is not less than 4, but b is right because you're using this or statement you're saying is a less than four or b less than four and if that's true then we're coming into here now furthermore if you wanted to involve let's do a c you can combine you know multiple conditions like this you can put this into a pair of parentheses like this and you can say you know end c is equal to 3. So you can see now that you're saying, okay, is a less than 4 or b is less than 4? And also, is c equal to 3? Then come into branch 1. Now, these brackets matter a lot because what you're doing is you're saying that uh, this has to be true and this has to be true. But for example, if I just shift the brackets a little bit and I say something like this, then that changes the meaning completely because now I'm saying is A less than 4 or is this part true, right? So where your brackets are matter a lot and it changes the meaning of what you're checking. Did you get that? In this case, I am checking is this true or is this true but the other way around I'm checking is this true and is this true right so the brackets matter finally let me show you another operator that we have here so here we have we're checking is C equal to 3 well, what if we want to ask, is C anything but 3, or is C not equal to 3? If we only care about the case where C is not 3, we can say something like this, not equals to 3. And this is going to say, um, is C not equal to 3? So you can see here that C is 3, so that's why it, it completely skips this branch and... Um, it ends up being A is equal to 10 and it prints branch 3. Now you can use this NOT operator, this exclamation mark here, on other things as well. So for example, here I'm asking is A equal to 10, right? And I am, uh, it, it's coming in here because A actually is 10, so it's printing branch 3. But if I surround this um, like that, uh, let me put something else in here. Is A equal to 10 and B equals to 1? Right? That is true. So that's why I'm still getting branch 3. But if I put an exclamation mark here, like that, it basically flips it around. So uh, this evaluates to true, right? A is a 10. This evaluates to true. Both of this whole condition evaluates the true, right? Um, a is A equal to 10 and B is equals to 1. And then, so we get true, but then we're adding this guy here. It flips that true to a false. So that's why um, this whole condition equates to false. Okay, so that does it for if statements. I hope you're trying this out on your own computer in the playground, because trust me, it's pointless to try to memorize all of the keywords and the syntax for the Swift. It's much better if you 
you know, only spend 30 minutes instead of trying to memorize things, spend 30 minutes in the playground, uh, just punching in different numbers like that, playing around with the different conditions and expressions uh, and printing out a bunch of stuff in the console. In 30 minutes, you'll remember a lot more just by doing that than trying to memorize, you know, how to declare a variable or how to declare an if statement. So, you know, if you can get a Mac, get Xcode, open an, a playground and then type this code out for yourself and, and play around with it. It's going to do wonders. So thanks again for watching. And if you like this series so far, please give the video a thumbs up. Please subscribe. It really helps get the, um, the channel out there. YouTube's going to like to see that. And as a result, it's going to give this video more exposure. So it's going to help the channel grow and it's going to help me continue producing these videos for you guys as well. Thanks for watching again. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.